Verbally Effective with Ina Esco is an interview style podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus with producer Sana Marie. Each week, I'm joined by a featured guest with roots in Memphis. Verbally Effective delves into each guest's personal journey to uncover the incredible stories fueling their purpose, the highs and lows of their pursuits, and how through their passion, they are moving the culture forward. Be sure to follow Verbally Effective and Ina Esco on Instagram. Also, download the Verbally Effective podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Don't forget to check out the website and submit to be a guest at verballyeffective.com. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to another edition of the Verbally Effective Podcast. You know, this is the podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus. I am your host, your double E, Ina Esco. I need you guys to subscribe to the podcast on all platforms, as well as the YouTube, Ina Esco. I want to send a huge shout out to all of you that have subscribed lately. The numbers are going up, and I really, truly appreciate you all. We are putting Memphis on the map with this podcast. I want to shout out my team as well, Mr. Patrick, Brandon, and Ari. Let's get right into it with my guest. You've probably seen him gracing a stage or two in the M-Town. He is a recording artist and also a mental health therapist. I bet you didn't know that. I am talking about none other than Gerald Richardson. What's good? What's good? I'm so glad you made it. Hey, let's get it, man. Yes. I'm excited to be here. And how are you feeling today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. See how I describe that. That's very descriptive. I'm wonderful, man. It's cold outside, it's but cold I'm excited today. to be here, man. Yes. It's been a minute. Yes, it's all Thank good. You. It's all good because I've seen you perform um, throughout my, uh, you know, world here in Memphis, <laughs> and you do a dynamic job. Thank you. Like Stella. Thank you. Stella. So we're going to get into the entertainment, but let's start at the beginning. What part of Memphis are you from? So I'm from Orange Man. Oh, you're from the yeah, Mound. two fingers round, three okay. fingers down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I grew up in, Ma- in the Mound. Uh, uh-huh. We moved from Orange Mound to Bethel Grove. To Cherokee. Okay. So if you know about the Memphis mm-hmm. area, you know about those areas. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm rooted. I'm a, I'm a real Memphian, man. You really are. I'm a you, real you from Memphian. from the mound. Uh, <laughs> what does your fa- family dynamic look like growing up? Man. Brothers, sisters? Yeah, so I'm the youngest of eight siblings. Oh, wow. I'm the youngest. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad were gospel singers. My mm-hmm. mom played keys, drums, guitar, and bass. Amazing. Yeah, my dad was a bass player for 45 years, so wow. we come from a gospel music family. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little background history. 2008, I, I dropped a gospel CD. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's my I first can love. tell you love the Lord, though. That's my like, first like love. Like, he is with you in yeah. the conversation, yeah. your spirit. I, yeah. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. So you grew up with a strong foundation. Oh, yes, yeah. We, we we came out of the church. We're still mm-hmm. embedded in the church, and that's something that I still to my kids, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could I could do nothing without him, mm-hmm. and I understand that. I understand that I'm supposed to be giving back. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my grandma used to say, people get all they can, they can all they get, mm-hmm. and they sit on the can. Okay. You understand? Okay. So now you just have to kind of give back to everybody. Pour into all the people that you possibly can. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. A lot man. of people don't know that. I, but that's why you continue to prosper when you do that. Yes, that is true. That is true. Now, did your parents encourage you to be in this field, or did it just happen? It just happened. My mom didn't even know I could sing. What? She, <laughs> my mom never knew I could sing. Um, I was in the choir at school, and she never came to any of the performances because I didn't tell her. Mm. When I turned 19, I joined a band and I asked her to come out and she was like, you can't say. <laughs> and it blew her mind. So after she came out, she quickly told me, you're going to get in the choir next Sunday. And uh, that's where my gospel music comes from. My mom, wow. she was a dynamic singer. She passed in 2018, God rest her soul. And uh, she was a dynamic singer. So I, I really, the way I sing now, it's really her style. 
Okay. Yeah, I got it from my mom. Daddy could sing too. Though. Daddy was a bass player. Daddy just very. There's real laid okay. back. A bass player is really cool. Mm-hmm. That's how my dad was, man. Wow. Yeah. Now, are you still close with your siblings? I am. Um, they still treat me like I'm 12, 13. <laughs> yeah. Our parents both uh, passed away, so I have three older sisters and four older brothers. Wow. Yeah. That is a huge family. Yeah, huge family. Wow. So, <laughs> so let's get into this uh, with your upbringing. What high school did you go to? Ah, uh, <laughs> no, this is funny. So I live about four minutes from Melrose, mm-hmm. but I got bus to White Station. Okay. I got bus in White Station, and that's when they started doing redistricting in mm-hmm. Memphis. Um, people that lived across the street from me went to Melrose. Amazing. And I went to White Station, yeah. I begged my mom let me go to Melrose. She was like, nah. Was White Station a culture shock for you? It it was not because I went to campus school in elementary. Mm-hmm. If you don't know about campus school, it's on the campus of University of Memphis. Mm-hmm. First through the sixth. And it was a very diverse school back okay. then. So all of the faculty on campus, their kids go mm-hmm. to this school for elementary. Uh, so it was it was it was well attended first of all, and you had a lot of culture, so it was not a culture shock. So that was the difference of coming up in Orange Mound. I would have to kind of change hats mm. when I went to school. Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Cold switching. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so adapt. I did, and I started to bring some of my friends from school to my house. To the mound. To the mound. And, and I couldn't shake them. Out. And I couldn't shake they them. They love the mound. <laughs> they love the mound. <laughs> they did. I couldn't shake them. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of my friends, he went to high school. He tra- We transitioned from elementary school and we linked back up in high school. Mm-hmm. And we started the trend right back. Wow. And I and I heard you say that you, you got in the band in 19. Was that right after graduating? Yeah, right after graduating, uh, I was in Texas. And it was the, the band was called Southern Soul. Mm, what part of Texas? In Houston. I'm from Beaumont, so, oh! so I'm sure you know about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You like that Houston life, I, huh? I, I lived in Houston for eight years. Mm-hmm. I love, as a matter of fact, I will be in Houston July the 2nd. Look at you. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a show there. But uh, it, it, it was a culture shock going into elementary school. But when I went to White Station, uh, mm-hmm. I just fit right in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into the world of music from you, you know, starting off in a band to where you are now. You have grown so much. Thank and you. I know you've seen the evolution of the music scene in yeah. Memphis. Tell yeah. me a bit about what you've seen in your career as far as the music scene in Memphis. Okay. So I think now... Let me tell you what's what's consistent. Mm-hmm. The soul mm-hmm. of Memphis music. It's consistent. It's across the board. And and, and I think it attributes to going to church, man. Mm-hmm. We've got churches on almost every corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yes. you know, the musicians and mm-hmm. the artists, they are, you know, they really come from that church scene in that soul of Memphis. If you can make it here in Memphis— there's nowhere you can I go in the world. The and this is this is the fact. <laughs> this is this is fact, Ana. Um, but I, I like the consistency. It's not so much as the change, because you have to kind of if you if you're a Memphis musician, mm-hmm. artist, you're gonna have to bring Memphis. Mm-hmm. I've seen people come from other cities, countries that didn't make it here in Memphis. Mm-hmm. And it's this is a this is the toughest market in the it's world. So tough. I'm serious. Where did it I, come from? I don't Why? know. We, we get it out the mud. We get it grind here out in Memphis, the mud. man. I'm serious. And if you don't have that personality, uh if you can't say, "Hey, look, I don't take L's anymore." Mm-hmm. Those are lessons. I don't take losses anymore. Mm-hmm. And if you're tough enough to get back up and dust yourself back up and get back in the game, mm-hmm. you take another lesson. And you get back in the game, you'll make it. Yeah. But when you when you're soft, so to speak, and you wear your feelings on your shoulders in this Memphis music, okay. you're not gonna last, last man. No. You're not gonna last. And humility is the key mm-hmm. for me. It really is. It, it, it's the key tell. for me. I, yeah, I could tell. You know what I've noticed? Um, just being in radio in the music industry. Um, When I started to host a lot of shows, I noticed that a lot of the singers would do covers a Mm -hmm. lot. But that's what the crowd wanted. Now, had they sang their original cut, they looking like... 
Yeah. What's up with that, <laughs> Gerald Richardson? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a good question. So now I've kind of changed my, my style. Mm-hmm. Uh, God has blessed me to have a good mind for music. Mm-hmm. And I'm 51, so I've mm-hmm. seen a lot. I've mm-hmm. felt a lot of different emotions. And it kind of comes with um, my career outside of music. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm in mental health, so I know about emotions. Mm. And I started to write years ago. Uh, again, I wrote a gospel album in 2008. And one of the songs on there, it talks about this guy that was going through drug addiction mm-hmm. and how his friend was really struggling. And at the end of the song, he says, the friend is me. Mm. That's my story. Okay. That's my story. Um What you have to do when you're performing, you're trying to touch on every emotion. Mm -hmm. You're trying to touch every emotion. Women that come to the show, that's Mm. who I cater to. I know you do. (laughs) (laughs) But they're going to show you. A lot Mm -hmm. of of times they can't hide it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the wow factor, the awe factor. It's something that sets Mm -hmm. it off that lets me know, okay, go down that lane. Mm-hmm. Stay in that lane for a while. Mm-hmm. And it kind of gets the crowd engaged. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've started to sing a lot of my original music. Mm-hmm. You I'm know, the, the covers, you want to get them engaged. And that's mm-hmm. what the covers will do. Because they're familiar they're with it. They're familiar with that. And it, it gets the show going, yeah, right? Man. Yeah. Then right. you pop one of your originals. Go on, pop it on in at the right time. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That, that is very interesting to me that you just shared that, that you talked about your journey mm-hmm. in that particular song. Was it hard to actually let go and be vulnerable and bring that out? Uh, it was not, you know. Uh, for one, I'm a helper. I am a natural helper. I just want to help people. Um, And singing that song, I wanted to share my story. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I share my story. Mm -hmm. I do substance abuse classes with guys that are struggling with addiction. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Giving, I'm, hey, I'm, you can touch me. Mm -hmm. I'm open. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's, let's go forward. And when people find out that you're authentic, they're more apt to come. And just kind of, hey, tell me more about that. And that's what I love about it, man. So in my music, I have fun. I love to party. Mm -hmm. But there's a serious side where, hey, this this is a real deal. And we need to really touch on this subject. Definitely. And and I can see how your mental health um, experience can bring out emotions. Mm -hmm. And it is all about emotions, tapping into that. And, you know, speaking from the mental health perspective, you know, um, we're it's like it's finally not taboo anymore. Right. Right? <laughs> right. So I'm sure you've seen probably how that has changed yeah. as an expert in that field. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm seeing more men. Good. I'm seeing more men come Good. in and talk. Yeah. Uh, so um, I have two mentors in this field, uh, Dr. Gregory Washington, University of Memphis, and Dr. Jerry Watson, both of the University of Memphis. They have a network called Men Healing Men. And we've seen an increase of uh, black men coming in for therapy. Mm-hmm. It works. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, we come from a culture that, hey, that stuff yeah. don't work. Yeah. It works. Mm-hmm. Whenever you can find somebody that you could trust in, that you could tell your personal issues and they won't go any further than there, mm-hmm. you start to open up. And we've seen a lot more of that. Uh, and when I tell people, hey, look, I'm a mental health therapist. Hey, I need therapy. That's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. Yeah. I need. I got some stuff I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to hear. You know, I don't have therapy on the spot, but mm-hmm. that's what I want to hear. Yeah. Our, our, our culture is, um, we're still behind. Mm-hmm. We're still behind, you know, because yes. grandmama told us not to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Right. You know, and that's just not right. Do you think the main barrier is the trust factor? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm divulging this, yeah. my soul to this person. Can I trust them with this? It's the trust factor. Wow. And uh, if, if I could get them to commit to come in, just come through the door, mm-hmm. I'll do the rest. That's when you start to see layers being pulled back mm-hmm. and people start to share about their personal experiences. So. hmm it's wonderful, man. I yes. love it. I love it. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what God has blessed me with. I'm able to mix them together. Mm-hmm. I'm able to. You, music, it actually makes the world go round. Mm-hmm. 
If if you're having problems and you go out to a spot and you hear the music, you forget about those problems. Yeah, it takes you, know? you to a time. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. I wrote this song. It's called Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So Beautiful talks about the feeling of the music. It has a Latin feel. Mm-hmm. But the subject of the song is you don't have to dance. Mm-hmm. Just sit and be beautiful. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, know, you know, you hear the dun 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 mm-hmm. dun Make you want to move. Yeah, make you want to move. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to. Just be beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, those are the type of lyrics, man, that I really get into. Mm-hmm. Something that you can listen to. You hear the music, but let me hear the lyrics. Yes. So I love to write. Check my boy oh, out of really it, effective audience. <laughs> now, how did you know when, hey, things are changing, I need a manager, things are shifting? <laughs> at what point in your career did that happen for you? Uh, so I was at this fish market mm-hmm. on Lamar. Okay. And a guy called me and he said, hey, listen, um, in the next two to five minutes, God is about to change your life. What? Friend of mine, he called me. He was like, I was like, man, I received that. He was like, no, you about to get a call from either Las Vegas or New York. Mm -hmm. It's cool. He hung up the phone. Las Vegas number pops up. Guy on the other end. Hey, man, this is Larry Blackman. Cameo. Cameo. How would you like to come? (laughs) Meet us. I was like, man, that'd be cool, right? <laughs> Hung up the phone. Two minutes later, it's Gerald Richardson in. This is Gerald, oldest Williams of the Temptation. Oh my God. Calls my phone. Mm. And this is within five minutes. I'm thinking, what is going on? I knew then that it had gotten serious. And when I joined Cameo, um, maybe four years ago. Two years ago, Ina, it just got out of control. Mm. <laughs> it just got out of control, mm-hmm. and it, it got to the point where, like, I, I can't even answer the phone. Oh, it's jumping like this. It was jumping like, like this. I need a it, was, <laughs> it was really jumping, and mm-hmm. um, I knew then um, when I started on the road full time that it was going to get crazy, and it did. Wow. Yeah, so now, I mean, it's a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's a blessing, but you have to be aware. You will miss an opportunity if you miss a phone call. I'm here. Okay. You understand? I'm learning to I'm, answer the numbers. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, serious. ooh, I should have said I know. I know. And, 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 and it gets worrisome sometimes, but this is what we pray for. Yes. This is what yeah. we ask for. So there are times when I pick it up, like, okay, look, I'm going to write your number down, and mm-hmm. I'll call you back. Mm-hmm. But I want to answer those unknown numbers. Mm-hmm. You never know who it is. You never know. I like, had two legends call head? me in five minutes, and I, wow. you know, and I'm like, it's got to be God. What would you say in those four years, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned from Cameo? Be professional. Mm, and they know. Be professional. Mm-hmm. Um, the first gig I had, um, they called me on a Tuesday. They flew me out Thursday. That was quick. They were They called playing. me on Tuesday. They flew me out Thursday. They sent me 30 songs. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm going to meet them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to gig. So I get to the hotel, and they was like, hey, we're about to have rehearsal. And on that level, they expect you to stay ready, Mm. not get ready. Okay. They expect you to stay ready. My first show, it was 15,000 people. Dang. First show I ever did, 15,000 people with Cameo. And I'm I'm blown away at the crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did what I knew how to do was bring a lot of energy, bring a lot of energy, you know. And um, I've learned just how to be a professional, Mm -hmm. how to be a professional. You know, you you just can't go out and say, I'm going to go out here and do my thing. That's not what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I have a position to play in that group. Mm -hmm. I play my position. Okay. I don't cross over in nobody else's lane. Like a a, a padded little (laughs) man, go grab the mic and do your own thing. No, 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 no. Play your Cameo. position, <laughs> and, and, and and you know um, when when you have that professional mindset, whatever, however you define it, when you have that mindset, get clarity, mm-hmm. get clarity. What are y'all looking for out of me? And a lot of lot of us, we don't clarify what people are looking for, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm doing. Okay, what type of event are you having? Mm-hmm. How many people are going to be there? Mm-hmm. What's the theme? 
That way, this is I before can, you c- commit to booking an event. This is before I okay. commit. I want to know what I'm walking into. Yeah. I don't want to say, oh, hey, here's my set list, and it doesn't yeah. apply to the event. Okay. Right? If it's a 70s party, you need to be playing 70s music. Mm-hmm. So um, just being a better professional. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of people can sing. How are you off the stage? Okay. That's my, th- mm-hmm. that's that's where the real work is. Mm-hmm. How are you? Said something. Away from the mic. Mm-hmm. Can you communicate with me? Can okay. you come do a podcast and talk about yourself comfortably? Okay. You know, all of that matters. Yes. All of that matters. So, Do you feel like that you're a mentor for some of the um, the musicians and artists here in the city of Memphis? Right. I want to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Do they come to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. They do. Uh, not a lot. Mm-hmm. You got to understand, the Memphis culture is a tough culture. Um it's almost like some people feel like it's a competition. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's never a competition. If you put <laughs> 10 artists, 10 musicians on a stage, you're going to get 10 different approaches. Mm-hmm. So it's never a competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some, yeah, that, that come to me. Mm-hmm. But I'm a firm believer I give back. Mm-hmm. I give back. I offer sometimes. And, again, the mental health piece comes up. So if a person seems approachable, I approach them. Okay. If not, I kind of lay back. You know, yeah. if, if I could offer some advice, if they call me, of course, they're opening the door. I'm going to walk in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how you approach people, uh, especially at this level, in the Memphis area, you got to you gotta be aware, you know, that everybody's not on the same page. That is true. That is true. That is something I've learned. You know what, Gerald? We're going to jump into a segment called Hey, Maine, Say, Maine. <laughs> and this is a moment of transparency between you and me. And just be honest and okay. tell me what comes to mind. Um, <laughs> let's kick it off. What is your top two favorite bands? Uh, hey, man, say man. Hey, man, say <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> carry on. Okay, look. Okay. <laughs> and the bar case. Oh, I love the bar case. Oh, man. Them mm. Kate, I look Chris J. Shout out to Chris, Chris J. Jay. Shout out to James Alexander. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, professionals, professionals, mm-hmm. dead serious. When I was 15 years old, real quick story, ran into Larry uh, Dotson mm-hmm. at a pool party. I was 15. I was a rapper before I was a singer. What? I was a. I got bars. I got bars. You got now. bars. I got, I got bars, bars now. You know what I mean? Okay. Hey man. Hey Okay. Yeah. So I ran into him when I was fifteen, and I just spit. Mm-hmm. And what did he say? He was like, "We need to do a record." I was fifteen. I, I didn't know anything. That sounds like it. him. Oh, this is man. <laughs> and uh, it was so ironic when they were looking for a lead for the bar case. I tried out, mm-hmm. and. I'm, 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 I don't fit the bill, like, mm. of Larry. Okay. He's short and light-skinned. I'm kind of tall and dark. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so oh, there was been... a tryout. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, man, say, man, top two albums. Woo, now you talking. Uh, 1999, Prince. Okay, Prince. Um, do you do my... Prince in your sets? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to tell you now, this is the top <laughs> album of all times. Mm-hmm. Here, my dear, Marvin oh Gaye. My, oh, you said something. Uh, that's Gaye. the real joy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi, mine. Hi, mine. Uh, top two countries that you visited. Because oh I know you've God. been traveling in your career. I have. Uh, uh, London, UK. Mm-hmm. The Virgin Islands. Okay. Love it. What is it about the Virgin Islands? Virgin Islands is um, a place where there is solace, mm. peace. Is it just because of the nature, the people? It's both. Mm. It's both. Uh, and, and it's the various cultures. Mm-hmm. So I ran into a guy um, from St. Croix, and he was the coolest guy I've ever ever met in my life mm-hmm. and I met him on the ship we were sailing to uh, St. Thomas and he just had this glow about himself he's an older guy we ended up making to the port and he and I just got off the boat mm-hmm. three four hours and sat and talked and talked mm-hmm. and I, I, I'm, I'm so intrigued by the <laughs> different cultures mm-hmm. they're so much different than ours I mean yeah. they really really are steeped in their culture and we're just like a hodgepodge we, mm. we kind of 
take yeah. a little bit off of everybody. They are really strict about their culture. Yes. So uh, just they know being, their history. No. They practice it. Yes. 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 I understand. Yeah. So I, I was I was intrigued, um, and I think those two uh, are dope countries. Okay. Uh, thank you for your 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 <laughs> honest answers on Hey Maine, Say Maine, and you mentioned the cruise ship because you know we back outside now. Yeah. You know I know when. COVID hit real hard. Mm-hmm. You was at the house. You was singing on the Zoom. Actually, I started doing the Zoom joints. <laughs> you was doing the Zoom left. I was doing the virtual joints. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, people were skeptical. So I scaled my band back, and I just went to an acoustic set. So, me so it was just you? Me and another guy. Steve Bethany. Shout out to Steve Bethany. Oh, on the guitar. Yeah, we That's do it my now. boy. And it has really taken off. Okay. Yeah. So no more Zooms, though. Nah, we outside. We is outside. We outside. We getting it done. We back. So, Gerald, speaking of outside, tell me what you got coming up. Oh, man. So, listen, guys. I got some dope, dope, dope music coming up. Uh, Boo Mitchell, I recorded a song. Grammy Award winning. (laughs) He just got a new Grammy. Two. What's up, Boo? Two. Shout out to Boo Mitchell. Royal Studios. Mm -hmm. Uh, I recorded a song called Ordinary Love. Mm. Ordinary love uh, with Boo. Uh, I'm shooting a video on Monday. This coming okay. up Monday. Yeah, shooting a video this Monday. So I got three singles that I'm about to release. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so ready. Ordinary love, are. life of the party, okay. and beautiful. Y'all get ready. All original. All original. Did you music. write them? I did. 100%. So you're a writer too. I'm a writer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got a pen. I got a nice pen, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so what does your, um, other than your re- upcoming releases, what does your uh, gig schedule look like? So, I know you're on a with Cameo you know, and him. I am. So um, <laughs> that's the crazy part because I like playing at home. Mm-hmm. But you have to be... Um, you have to be skeptical about some spots. You know what I mean? You can't oversaturate yourself. a lot of new spots. A lot huh? of new spots, but you can't oversaturate yourself. Mm. You know, I heard Jerry yesterday. And be careful about singing at a lot of free spots. You got to be exclusive. Oh, see, they come with their professionalism. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. Learning your craft, learning the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm not playing a lot here at home. Now, I do play at a cigar bar, Stogie's. Okay, Shout out I'm Kenna familiar Robinson. with Stogies. I do Stogies on Wednesday. I'll be at Havana. Those cigar bars be popping. They are lit. And that's a good place to do your acoustic set. And a good place to network. <laughs> you, so you know, <laughs> you've been in the industry a long time, Yes, w. that's where they hang yeah. out. Yeah, so uh, I've really uh, gotten into that market. Uh, just kind of hanging out and singing a little bit, but mm-hmm. doing more networking. Yes. Yeah, yes. so I'm on the road. I think... Um, in the next four months, I'll probably be gone 16 weeks. Wow, that's a long time. It's just, it's, but it's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's a blessing. Yes, so uh, I'm looking forward to a busy travel schedule mm-hmm. and uh, releasing my music. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm going to have to, I, I, got, I got some shirts. I got T-shirts for yeah, you. I'm going to have to bring your shirts in. You up. and my guys, I'm going to have to bring y'all some shirts. Definitely. Yeah. Shout Definitely. out to my guy, Ty. <laughs> Uh, What's up, Ty? Yeah, man. He he he's <laughs> he's managing, uh, helping me manage right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is such a blessing. Mm-hmm. He's such a blessing. You need a good team. I know, man. I know. And you can't do it by yourself. You can't. I, I realized that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm kind of passing some of that stuff off. You know, when you start to gain trust, mm-hmm. you can say, "Hey, look, hey, call these people or call that person." Yes. Because I can't handle it. And after they do it and it work out, oh, I'm can good. you call? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can have this phone. Yes. <laughs> I'll get a new phone. <laughs> I'll give you a phone. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing, Gerald. I'm so proud of you because you've been in this game a long time. And Memphis loves you. Thank you so much. Memphis loves you. Do you have any regrets? Not one. Not one. Not one. I'm going to tell you, uh, and, and, and I used to think back, uh, it's like, man, I wish I didn't do that. But had not I failed at some mm-hmm. things, I wouldn't have known how good it feels mm-hmm. to be consistent mm-hmm. nowadays. And that's what really drives me. Um, I look back on my life and say, do I regret doing that? I do not. Mm-hmm. I do not. That's you the know? beauty of that's your the journey. Beauty of, yeah, man. Do not rush to the destination and miss the journey. Yes. This yes. is what it's about. Yes, it is. The dash. 
Yes. The dash. This yes. is what it's about. So, no, I do not. I don't have any regrets, man. Okay. Um, I have, uh, I've been married 24 years. Congratulations. 24 That's years. a long time. <laughs> Everyone can not say that. 24 years, and I have three beautiful daughters. Okay. Um, they keep me pockets dry. Mm-hmm. But I, I know they do. <laughs> Look, God bless you with three girls. Three girls. You man. know why. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with the singing. Ah, <laughs> wow. So I know you have a beautiful family. Um, you know, how does wifey feel that you're going to be gone for 16 weeks so on this rigorous schedule? What we've done, we've kind of mapped out some dates. Where, oh, she coming. Yes. Wifey, you better go. I won't, <laughs> <laughs> I won't fly to all of them. There's some that we could drive to. Mm-hmm. So that's what I normally do. The shorter mm-hmm. distances, the Alabamas, the Georgias. Mm-hmm. I will drive, and, you know, so she can get a chance to experience Mm -hmm. what I get a chance to experience. And see, she's been with you on this journey, and, you know, I didn't see you perform. How how does she respond to (laughs) when the ladies respond at these shows? What's she saying? Like, I already know he going to handle that. I know he know how to handle that. It's got a little hot in here, though. No! (laughs) You know, um, I think she's, she's been around... From day one, mm-hmm. especially with me performing. That's your day one. And uh, she's, she's seen me grow. Mm-hmm. And it's entertainment. It is. That's 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 my go-to statement mm-hmm. to everybody. It's entertainment. There's a difference in G. Rich and Gerald. Oh, G. Rich. G. Rich, G. Rich and is a Gerald. Stage. Okay, you know, G. Rich. Okay. I got to go get it, you know? Okay. But I thought that was the rap name. Hold on, G. Rich. Oh, 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 next you. time I'm here. That's your alter ego, Next time I'm G. here, Rich. a hot 16. A hot 16. I'm going to make you do a hot 8 <laughs> before you go. I'm trying to get you to do a hot 8 before you leave. Oh, damn, serious. A hot 16. <laughs> Drop. Drop. Where the beat? Brandon, where's the beat? <laughs> Brandon, I got you, bro. <laughs> But uh, wow. my wife, she 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 takes it in stride. Good. You know, I make sure um, she's there. Mm-hmm. Um, whether she's there or not, it's the same show. Mm-hmm. You come off the stage, and that's when the real magic happens. You just you let these people know, hey, look, I'm just a guy up here mm-hmm. entertaining you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always introduce my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 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 a happy married guy. Uh, and if my wife can stay with me for 24 years. <laughs> yes. You know, like, at, after 24 years of being with someone, y'all yeah. know each other. Yeah. Like, yeah. who wants to start over? <laughs> no, nobody want to do she that. She knows my crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know her. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. that's great to have a supportive spouse yeah. in this entertainment industry because, you know, we see all the time, yeah. all the issues. Mm-hmm. Even with social media, you know. So, uh, social media. How are you with social media? Is that something that you got to... You know, I like it. Because I'll say you post on Facebook. It's a a lot. It is. It's It's a a job. job. (laughs) Social media itself is a job. Yeah. Uh, But it's something that I've grown accustomed to Mm -hmm. utilizing. Um, It's getting better. And I'm I'm actually getting a, a team together to start handle those mm-hmm. accounts because again it's yeah. it's busy. But you know what? That social media can raise your brand yeah. to another level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But out, outside of here, uh, I was talking to a guy from the UK. Uh, I want to say on my, it was Tuesday of this week, and in 2019, my first single naturally dropped, mm-hmm. and it went to number two on the uh, global soul chart mm-hmm. in the UK. Congrats. So thank you so much. And he was just um, just talking about making a difference and your music making a difference, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. You mm-hmm. know, is make sure my music is mm-hmm. making a difference, man. Yes. You know, so I got younger guys that's coming up, man, and mm-hmm. I want to make sure that they say, okay, we can do classy music yeah. and be just as dope. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't all have to be ratchet. We could do classy as well. Yes. So, yeah. so look at you evolving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look yeah, at yeah. you. <laughs> and you want to help these uh, younger guys because yeah. just like Cameo helped you. Yeah, yeah. Even to this day, um, I, I get into this mode where I'm just like a sponge. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on the stage with legends. Mm-hmm. Uh, weeks at a time with a legend. And if I'm not doing myself due diligence and trying to soak up all of that knowledge, I'm doing myself a disservice. Yeah. Uh, I'm always respectful. 
Again, I don't cross over in anybody's lane, but get the knowledge. Get the knowledge. We know you can sing. We know you can dance. Get you sure don't do me dancing. <laughs> he got the moves too. <laughs> Gerald. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, you know what, Gerald? I really appreciate you for joining no me problem. today on the Verbally Effective Podcast. You have an amazing journey. I want everybody out there to get his new three upcoming original singles. Ooh, Beautiful. Life of the Party. Life of the Party. Ordinary Love. Ordinary Love. Root to the bros. Oh, yes, he is Omega Sci-Fi <laughs> in the building. 20 Pro Love to yes. you. Now, let everybody know your social media handles and how they can keep up with your journey and contact you if need be. Thank you so much. That'll be Twitter, GRich10, IG, what is my Gerald1061? Gerald. Yeah. Gerald Richardson on Facebook. Y'all follow your boy. Oh, man. Follow your boy, <laughs> Memphis 10, recording artist, mental health therapist. He got bars, too, but, you know, we're going to find out about that. You know, he's on a world tour with Cameo right now. I have truly enjoyed him. Big shout-outs to Gerald Richardson for joining me today on the Verbally Effective Podcast. I wish you nothing but the best, Thank you Gerald. So much, Thank you, you are amazing. Thank you. And you guys are amazing, too. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of the Verbally Effective Podcast. Be sure that you are subscribing to the YouTube channel, Ina Esco, and also to the pod on all streaming platforms. Platforms. I'll see you guys next week for another edition of the Verbally Effective Podcast.